Hello everyone, welcome. We're at Treasure Island. Welcome, we're at the uh, Treasure Island. Sassy J, K, L, Rocky Boy, yeah! I'm at the uh, Treasure Island. I'm gonna find the uh, Carnival Court. What's up, Kurt Good? What's up? I had a, I had, I just had a, there's a Popeye's chicken at the, uh, Kirk Good, what's up? Thanks for joining us. What's up, GW? I'm walking through the uh, fabulous Treasure Island. <clears throat> Excuse me. For a dry run, and I loved it. It's just as much fun as Fremont. All right, let me uh, figure out my way out of here. Dan619, yes, I'm walking through the lovely uh, Treasure Island on my way to head to the Carnival Court but I always get lost. They had 619 in the house. We're in the Treasure Island. That's what's up. This is the uh, yogurt shop. Yes, Devin, have you been to Carnival Court? <laughs> oh, you'll get to see my face, don't worry. I don't want y'all to get tired of looking at my face. <laughs> but thank you, Kirk Good. Let me try to find my way out of here. We're heading towards Carnival Court. They have live music, and I'm so excited. Uh, oh, shit, that's where they have, this is where they have the Cirque du Soleil. I guess people are coming out of this show. Somebody up. <clears throat> oh, this is the uh, <clears throat> this is the Treasure Island Casino. Yes. All right, let me try to figure out. All right, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> Like, I don't really know the strip as much, and I want to do, I want to go to the strip a whole lot more and get to really know, like, all the different casinos. <laughs> which I'm really, which I'm really, oh, okay, cool, yeah, I was just talking to Yoli earlier. What's up, bringer of life? So we're in the Treasure Island Casino. That's where they had the uh, Mystère, the Cirque du Soleil show. <laughs> Hope everyone is feeling good. Just uh, have some patience with me because it's hard to figure out how to exit these places. And my mission is to get to know, you know, more of the strip and 
like you know get to know like walk through as many uh, casinos as I can like I want to do like fashion show mall and Caesars Palace but right now my mission is to do a uh, carnival court look they got a Popeye's Blackie Chan <laughs> No, a Blackie Chan is a. Uh, got a. Blackie Chan's gonna come out on another night. But a uh, Blackie Chan don't take no mess. Papa don't take no mess. <laughs> but uh. And Blondie Chan is on a hot date. <laughs> but you funny early love 2023. <laughs> so hope y'all are feeling great. Let me ask somebody. I want to get to know as many uh, casinos as possible. Who had back surgery today? 7.62? So bear with me if there's any buffering. Sometimes the uh, reception isn't so good. I mean, I have a 5G T-Mobile. Which is actually tends to be better than Verizon. Yay, thanks y'all for joining me. Yeah, this is the Senor Frogs. They have some cool parties at Senor Frogs. I might check it out one night. They have like, has any of y'all been to Senor Frogs? It's in the Treasure Island. Oh, wow. And then look at this amazing sirens. I love this. How beautiful is that? Oh. Kirkwood, you've never been there? Yeah, Treasure Island has a pretty homey feel for a casino. And look at this uh, beautiful... You know about the story about the sirens? That they have like really beautiful voices and they make the sailors go crazy. I think it comes, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I mean, it, it, I, I'm not sure if it's Greek mythology. But yeah, we'll do more research on the sirens because I told you I wasn't lying about the learning and burning. What's up, Chicago Kong? Thanks for... Gillies, this is actually a nice restaurant. What's up, Stellar Pay? Got the water here. Ooh, this is beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, I had this idea too that it would be awesome to make like a a video a video game. Have it be like Fremont and uh, the Strip. And basically, you know, in Vegas, you want to do the Strip and Fremont. You want to do both. Viva la différence. <laughs> yeah, it is really... Look at, and then here's the other side. Wait, let me get you a better view. That is beautiful at night. I've only... I haven't seen this at night. It's beautiful during the day. And then there's another. If you turn this way... There's the wind, you got the water. Ooh, I like it, ooh. Yeah. Cause we moving on up to the east side. Right, but we're gonna go to a carnival court, which is up a ways. It's at 3475 Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, yeah, Lala, it's a little cold, but I can handle the cold. I'm fine. As long as I got weed, I'm good. <laughs> oh, this is the Gillies. 
I don't know if y'all heard of Gillies. They got pretty good food. Gillies! Oh, you loved it when they had the show? What's, what, the show at, uh, hey, J Poppy! Right? If you, as long as I got my weed, I'm good. <laughs> And I'm grateful to y'all to keep for keeping me company. I mean, I would come out here and do this alone. So thanks for uh, keeping me company. Oh, the old pirate sign. Where's the old old pirates? Yes, they rob I. Sold I to the merchant ships. Yeah, that's a, it is a Western themed restaurant. Seller pay. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Kirk Good. Yeah, I figured I I promised that uh I'd come out to the strip more. I wanted to go Saturday, but it was raining. And I was going to go yesterday, but then I remembered that <laughs> then I remembered that Velvet Elvis was uh I'm trying to figure out what side of the road it's uh Oh, okay, I see where it is, Caesar's Palace over there. So we're heading towards Caesar pa Caesar's Palace because uh, uh, Carnival Court is between Harrah's and Caesar Palace, so you might want to go inside the Caesar's Palace as well. Before that, I think they close at 10. So, I then demand no more mushrooms. I, I mean, you know, I might just keep it, I might just keep uh, my mushroom thing to myself <laughs> because I just wanted, I mean, I just wanted people to know, like, you know, you know, about the ba the brand, it's called Polka Dot Mushroom Belgian Chocolate, but uh, I might keep that mushroom thing to myself because <laughs> some of y'all people don't understand mushrooms, like, you microdose mushrooms. You know, it's you know it's been you know they stu they did a study at Johns Hopkins and it's actually really good for uh, you know it, it prevents you from feeling depressed. So now people are taking you know these you know antidepressant drugs, and the side effect is that you might kill yourself. So what good what good is an antidepressant that's just going to make you kill yourself possibly? You know. As far as I'm concerned, shrooms, they may, they may make you all zonked out or wonked out the next day, but it's not going to make you want to kill yourself. So, you know, people be judging on the mushrooms, and meanwhile people are dying from antidepressants. Oh, Alright, so I'm going to have to cross over here to get to uh, Caesar's Palace. Oh, thank you, McKinley Morganfield. Yeah, because... Uh, <laughs> Chocolate have cubiness, psilocybin in it, Jay Poppy. Yeah, I don't need those Brunos, right? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I don't care who knows. I don't. I could care less. I'd rather have everybody know because you know what? They may judge me, but me, you know, being honest about about the you know the mushroom chocolate, maybe it might save a life. You know, so I was kind of thinking about. No, the only reason why I wanted to keep it to myself is because it's so good, it's so delicious, and I love it so much. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, you know, people are gonna, you know, think I'm some kind of uh, junkie, but I don't care because I hope that it, you know, I hope that it saves, you know, if it saves a life, that's worth it, right? <laughs> Julie K, what's up? Look. Yes, my mission is to get to know as many, to get to know the strip a lot more. I mean, there's always things about Fremont to discover too, like there's Cat's Meow, which is the karaoke bar, then you have the Nerd Bar, and you know, at the mall by the uh, Denny's. I mean, there's always something new to uh, discover on Fremont. But yeah, the strip is like, ooh. See, now this is what they do, they confuse you. <laughs> Alright, now I'm at the Venetian. Uh, 
All right, I'm trying to see. That's one thing about that's. All right, I'm thinking I'm going down. I'm trying to find the uh, the green door. No, the green door. That's located at 900 Karen Road. That's some kind of like. Uh, what is that? The green door. What do they call that? It's a lifestyle thing. It's like a. I know, like, what is it? It's kind of like a, like a, isn't like a swingers thing? The green door? <laughs> Holly said, well, hey, y'all, Miss Tessa, beautiful, inspiring, yay. Yeah, this. <laughs> so, and somebody told me that the upside down uh, pineapple logo is actually a swingers logo. <laughs> Oh, look at this beautiful fountain. The Venetian. Ooh. Yeah, Julie K is uh, Italian. So, uh, your peach. Now, this is the thing that. At least it's nice and yeah, that's a beautiful fountain, right? Now I can't wait to go into the Caesar's Palace, but Oh yeah, you knew about the pineapple thing? The upside down pineapple for uh the swingers logo. Ooh, look at this. Now we're at the Venetian too. The lovely Venetian. And they always make it so hard to find the exit. I, they designed the casino so you get lost. Then you gotta gamble. <laughs> yeah, you love them fountain. Mother Nature, that fountain is a squirting orgasm, right? <laughs> Oh, I think I gotta go up here. So thank y'all for joining me. I'm at the uh, Venetian. I'm trying to get to the live music at Carnival Court, but you gotta have a lot of patience when when you walk through these casinos because they design them to, for, to make you get lost. Yeah, we love. Oh, this is. Oh, this is. This I've been to this club. Oh, this club is hot. I've been here once. Tao Club Tao. Oh wow. This club is hot. I've been to this club. Oh shit! They got a Fat Tuesday over here. <laughs> they got a Fat Tuesday on Fremont. This club is hot. I. I had fun at this club. Yo, this is the club right here, y'all. See, and now I, I wonder, like, if I want to go to one of these parties, I probably couldn't bring my gimbal, but I probably could use my makeshift gimbal. I don't know if y'all remember, if you saw that video where I used my clips, because, uh... All right, now I'm leaving the... So, Club Tab, that's a good club, y'all. What's up, Winner of Life? Okay, so now we're exiting the Venetian. Ooh, this is pretty. This is this is right outside the Venetian. Ooh. And don't worry y'all, we're trying to get to the music. Yeah, you can make a gimbal for 99 cents. Get two of them binder clips and one inch paper clips. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jay Papa, you been there to Club Tao? For real? Yes, the Venetian. Marco Press, esta en la casa. <laughs> oh, this will be a nice view. Look, this is where they have the, uh, 
Yeah, when you're at Club Tao, you get this beautiful view. Somebody said they saw the show Love. Oh, Omnia is sick. Yeah, that's the teacher's pause. I want to go there. So if I want to live stream from these clubs, and if y'all wanted to watch these live streams from the clubs, I'm going to have to learn how to operate without a gimbal or use my uh, binder clip makeshift gimbal. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This would be a good smoke spot. But I want to smoke by the music when I get to Carnival Court. Because otherwise, if you don't pay attention, you could get easily lost. Yeah, we're going to uh, Carnival Court. But, you know, when you're walking around the strip, it's like all these stairs and escalators. And we're trying to go to Carnival Court where the music is. Yeah! Woo. See, that's why we can't be judging the... Uh, we can't be judging the gamblers and the drinkers. This is this is what their money. This is what all the gamblers, all the gambling and drinking money. Oh, Carnival Court. Yeah, it's between uh, Harrah's and Caesar Palace. Uh, there's live music and uh, and it's actually it starts at noon to 3 a.m. So. And they have, it's, it's, you know, it's open air, so if it's raining, you, you know, like I wanted to go Saturday, but it was raining too hard. <laughs> Damn, I'm just trying to get out of here. Right. Oh, you've been to Tao. Yeah, Club Tao is cool, right? Yeah, Carnival Court by Harris, and uh, I went there on a dry run a, a couple Sundays ago, and honestly, it's just as much fun as Fremont Street. I mean, maybe it's not as kicking, you know, the week, but during the week, but I want to check it out for sure. So thanks y'all for joining me. <laughs> What's up, smoking? Get that 420 IQ. <laughs> All right, I see, you see the sign, the Harris sign? We're getting there. Yeah, there's so many escalators. And then, you know, and if you're in a chair, like if you're in a wheelchair, it's hard because, you know, no wonder you were having a hard time, Yoli, because and then a lot of the elevators aren't open. Oh, they got the Madame Tussauds on Times Square. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't know the Madame Tussauds right here. Yeah, they got a Madame Tussauds uh, uh, at Times Square in New York. Yeah, so basically I want to get to know like more about the Strip. I mean, I'm two miles away from Fremont. I'm four miles away from the Strip, so that's still pretty near. Oh, I don't. Thank you. I better put that welcome. Yeah, the Rude Girl Mansion. Shit. Thank you for, uh, thank you for reminding me. That's sweet of you that you missed my uh, logo, Randy, because some people, you know, well, no one has complained about the logo, but sometimes people complain like, oh, it's distracting. So I'm glad that you actually reminded me to put it on. That makes me feel really good. Thank you so much. <laughs> So sorry if I'm not talking that much. I'm trying to concentrate to get to the right spot. Oh yeah, I see the Caesar's Palace. 
Yeah. Oh, thank you, Julie K. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, somebody was saying, like, I'm repeating myself a lot. So, I mean, I know I'm like addicted to that whole explicit exponential excellence with the orchestration of orgasmic originality. <laughs> but I just feel that that could never get old. I mean, don't you want some explicit exponential excellence and some orchestration of orgasmic originality in your life? <laughs> oh. oh, look. Great place to gamble, the Casino Royale. Yeah, I heard some things about the Casino Royale. Where is that? Is that, uh, did we just pass it? I don't, honestly, I don't know much about the strip and that's what I'm trying to do, learn more. Because I live like two miles from Fremont Street. But I live four miles from the strip. And, uh, it's always good to it's always good to uh, go out there and like exper and like you know experiment for yourself because I myself was under the impression oh I just passed it I myself was under the impression that the strip is boring and people been telling me like no just stick to Fremont Street the strip is boring I'm like but how could the strip be boring <laughs> And I guess maybe because there's, and I was thinking, oh, maybe because, you know, you don't have, like, you know, live music and stuff, but Carnival Court is fun. I can't wait to go there. And along, what's up? Oh, right here, the Casino Royale. With the chocolate shrooms? Uh, I had a couple squares. <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, you know, and I'm going on, you know, I actually, I, you know, I go on other live streams and now some people are talking about me being, uh, being some kind of shroom head. <laughs> Love. And, uh, I have to admit that I'm not going to be ashamed of the fact that I've been microdosing on uh, shrooms because, you know, I'm a really sensitive person and the mushrooms help me, uh, you know, be more relaxed and not get upset by things. And basically what a lot of, what, what a lot of these trolls are trying to do is they're trying to pull you out of character and make you sit, make you get so infuriated that that you tr what? Uh, YouTube. Hello. What's up? Hello. What's your What's, up? What's your Welcome name? Welcome to Vegas, baby. What's your Tanner name? from Colorado. Oh, nice. You What's have a name? you have an IG or something to promote? Uh, Tanner underscore Wall. Tanner underscore wall. T A N N E R underscore W A L L. Tessa, oh, you want to check the, the channel on YouTube? Thank you. I will. Right. I will. <laughs> Take care. You look good, baby. But how old are you? 25. 25? Oh, shit. Ooh, look at this purple tree. Ooh. And I, oh, the thing is, oh my god. Am I tripping or is this tree? Oh, wow. I love it. Oh shit, look at this tree. I only wanna see you smoke that purple string. Well, I'm so excited. Oh look, there's Caesar's Palace. So if any of y'all are familiar with, uh, I know Fabian Contreras. Why is it that, why is it that all these young guys who are like 25, 24, why are they, why are they like, why, you know, why are they always like trying to uh, flirt with me? I must be doing something right. <laughs> oh no, what I'm trying to say is that what they try to do is they, they get you, you know, they, they try to get you so infuriated that they try to pull you out of character and then you're gonna say something and then you're gonna get caught on your own live stream, you know, looking like a troll because you're trying to, you know, troll back to a troll and what they're trying to do is try to make you commit YouTube suicide. 
because you know you can't you know you can't act like that on your own channel you know and 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 get pulled out of character and then and then talk about how you want your channel to be positive when you yourself you know are trolling back so that's what they're trying to do you know they're trying to uh, make you commit youtube suicide <laughs> oh carnival right i think we're Oh look, it says Carnival Court right here. What's Tate face is so funny? I gotta ask around. Oh yeah, good. Oh good. Oh good night. Seven point six two. Thanks for joining us. I know seven point six two. You're a local. All right, so here's Sahara sign. Tom and Jerry. Yeah. So that's what they're trying to do, you know. So, and um, all of you know, and, and uh, what do you call it? I'm saying that y'all have a right to like talk about other streamers within reason. Now the main thing is. You know, you can talk about people's characters or if you like their show or their channel. You know, I'm just saying that we shouldn't go, you know, ad hominem about it. A-D-H-O-M-I-N-E-M. -E like, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, dissing people for their physical characteristics. I mean, we have a right to... You guys, it's so windy. My uh, head. Damn, I just lost my headband. Shit. Sorry, y'all. That it was so windy. I just lost my headband. <laughs> so be careful, y'all, when you come out here and it's so windy. I just lost my organza orgasm headband. Hold on. Damn, that shit blew away. Oh well. Sorry you guys, I just lost my headband. It was so windy. So be careful y'all. When you come to the strip, be careful it's so windy sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. So so, you know, that all I'm saying is that, you know, we, you know, I think that, you know, we have a right to, you know, evaluate people on their character and their behavior, but let's try not to go, you know, ad hominem about it and uh, diss on their physical characteristics. That's all I'm saying. So, I mean, I feel that we all have a right uh, to say that we prefer other channels over other channels. And I just, I'm not going to be a dictator about it. I just wanted to qualify that. Like, you know, you have a right to talk about other streamers, but let's try uh, to lead by example and just evaluate people on, like, their dancing ability or how they act, their behavior. You know, you have a right to express that. So, <laughs> y'all, David Bar, I love the way the Americans say y'all is cute. Oh, shit. Oh, you're right, uh, Lala, how many steps do I get in? No, I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm just saying, look, if you're, if you, uh, like, if you're on, uh, Dancing with the Stars, you know, you have a right to, uh, judge people's dancing ability, you know, it's a show that's judging people's dancing ability. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have a right to evaluate my streaming and like, oh, maybe my camera skills aren't all that or whatever. I'm just saying you have a right to say that. <laughs> like, for example, on somebody else's live stream, somebody was like, Tessa lost her butt. I'm like, what? How am I going to lose something I never had? 
<laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yo, yo, Tessa lost her butt. What? I never had a butt. How am I gonna lose something I never had? <laughs> Well, I hope that I'm not a racist, but we do live in a racist world, and that is the reality of our world. And we live in the world where racism is justified and institutionalized. So, if I, if unwittingly I am participating in some kind of behavior that's racist, I'm sorry, you know, racism is institutionalized and uh, systematized in this country and in the world and uh you know people are racist against marijuana people are mad racist against marijuana marijuana is a victim of racism <laughs> oh thank you lala so this is the carnival court i guess on a monday it's not as uh kicking but i guess saturday sundays is the way to go you know all I'm saying is I plan to be the Socrates of live streamers, yo. Cause I got my philosophy of, I got my uh, philosophy of herbal discourses. I got me my PhD. <laughs> yeah. And on the weekends, it's so much more kicking, but. Oh, thank you, Kirk Good. I'm kind of sad though. I lost my organza orgasm headband in the wind. I, sh I guess I should have had a binder clip on it. <laughs> I guess you know, the live music is going to be the same screen name trolls attacking you last time we're doing it on Mark's channel. Yeah, Lala, that's all I'm saying. You know, I'm trying to be the Socrates of live streamers. And all I'm saying is that, you know, positivity is a choice. If, if it's something to be forced, then it's no longer a choice. So that's why, you know, all I'm saying is that you have a right to your opinion. And you have a right to choose positivity, which also means that we, if we have a right to choose positivity, then we also have to accept, uh, unfortunately, we have to also accept negativity. Like we have to confront it in order to transmute it. So, uh-oh, shit, I got another little 25-year-old trying to, what is up with these 25-year-olds? Why are they always trying to flirt with me? Don't they know that I'm 420 years old? <laughs> what is up with these 25 year olds? Up here to your left, that's quality. Oh, which one? This, which one? To my left? Now I definitely wanna, this is what I, this is my plan. Oh, uh, ooh, we got some sexy ladies over here. Uh, which, uh, th oh, they're looking for a cougar, right? Oh, they they think I got money or something, right? <laughs> Frank M. Now this is a cool idea to sushi, sushi burritos. I'm giving out those milk vibes. Ooh, yeah. Now, I figure, you know, I figure uh, maybe like for 10 more years, I think for 20 more years, I'll be able to like get away with not with not paying but I think you know when I get older like you know if I have to pay for sex I will there ain't nothing wrong with that <laughs> who's playing that broke right maybe they just I don't know Yeah, but don't forget, y'all. That's why I'm going to make sure I come to Fremont every other night. Because I got my new uh, Chippendales friend, Luis. Ooh. I was like, are you 21? And he's like, I'm 24. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I got my Chippendales, Luis. My little Chippendales buddy. J-Pop, he's here to protect you. Robdale, you... Oh, yeah, Robdale, you was... Uh, when you were younger, you were, you were like chasing after the cougars. Was that you, Rob Dale? <laughs> Josh Mariscal, yes. Yeah, Holly She, where are you from? Oh. 
Yeah, no lie. Oh, shit. Rob, yo, you must be rich. Did you save all that money, though? All your sugar mama money? <laughs> Oh, cool. You know what I'm gonna do? Uh, maybe also check out the inside of uh, Caesar's Palace because it's so beautiful. That would be fun too to do the uh, Ferris wheel. That'd be a really, that would be fun one day to, um, So yeah, basically, uh, oh wow, okay, so it is pretty quiet, you know, on a Monday. I guess the weekends are more fun. I want to go through, uh, oh, this is where you can do the, uh, oh, this is what I want to do. That's the, uh, oh, shit. That's the uh, Ferris wheel. Oh, this is where you can get, if, when you're at Carnival Court, you can do the uh, fly link. Frank answered, I stayed at Caesars on one visit to Vegas. Yeah, so Carnival Court is pretty quiet, you know, on a Monday, I guess. Do you want to thought that I watch Magic Mike? No, but I want to. I want to do all of that. The thunder down under, all of that. <laughs> Basically, I want to do, I want to see everything that I can see, like on the strip. And... Oh, thank you, Julie K. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe what I might do is like on a slow, you know, on a quiet or slow night at the strip, maybe uh, like uh, bring, uh, like play music or something. Or maybe like play music on my other phone. Or, <laughs> I gotta think, I was thinking, you know, cause I actually like play the bongos. I think it'd be fun to bring my bongos, like on a nice night and like play my bongos. <laughs> oh, I'm not a carnival court. So, let me ask somebody. This is just the mall then, right? Wait, Josh Marisco. Down under. Thunder down under. That's at Excalibur. Okay, take your time, Frank. In. Kirkwood, yes, I play the bongos. And, uh, you know, when you first learn the bongos, oh my God, you play, it's hard to even play the bongos like real strong and hard for like even for five minutes. And then you just gotta keep at it. And now I got it to like where, now I got to where like I can play like nonstop for like, you know, a couple hours. But that took a lot of practice. Woo! Oh look, here's the fountain. Damn, on a hot day, you could just jump in there. What's up, Luna? What's Luna doing? Great fans go to Brooklyn Bowl. Terry Egan, um, and out to your left. Oh, in and out to my left. Somebody. Wait, excuse me. Do you know where a uh, carnival court is with the music? What? The carnival court? No. Uh, never heard of it. Sorry. Oh, they don't even know where. Uh, they don't even know where carnival court is. I thought this was carnival court. Wait. Smokey says, "At Yolanda, I know to some. Don't piss Yolanda off." <laughs> You 
Eugene, Eugene you'll help me uh, guide me towards Carnival. Oh, it's next to Harris. Eugene Gonzalez, you know Vegas like your dog. Oh yeah, where are you? Do you live in Vegas, Eugene? Look at uh, look at uh, Mona Lisa. She got the. Uh, Hey, you want to hear something funny? So, you know that lady that I met? She said her channel is uh, Tea Time with Olive. It was uh, last Friday night. And she told me that... <laughs> she told me that she had 500,000 subscribers. So then I go on her YouTube channel and she only has like 12 subscribers. Like, what is that? Is that like pathological lying? <laughs> I don't know because uh, I heard back in the day I heard, I heard like on YouTube you could like hide how many subscribers you really have what's up do y'all know where the what's carnival court is huh? the music no y'all know where the live music is carnival court I have no idea this is actually the first time I've been here oh, oh, actually okay. the second time but oh okay all right have fun what's up Kevin Reed I was under the impression that this is carnival court oh Oh look, there's the flamingo. Oh Josh Maris looks at this not how the brain works. How does the brain work? Oh, Carnival Court is part of Harris. Well, whatever this is, this is, uh, I guess, like a mall, right? Oh, go right into the link. Yeah. I lost my uh, organza orgasm headband. I'm so sad. No more orgasms for me. Damn. Oh, walk into the link. Walk in here. Watch out my extensions. Oh yeah, I don't have extensions. That's a Shanene chant. Josea Compita, thank you. Go inside the link. Thank you, Jose. Well, I'm gonna get lost inside the link. I'd rather just be outside and find it. I need to get out of this court. Well, I'm not going to go into the link because every time I go into a casino, I get so lost. Go towards the strip and turn right. Okay. So right now, I'm going to turn a right. I'm going to make a right turn. Oh, thank you, Kurt Good. The Link Hotel. Oh, this is Dwight. All right, I'm making a right. Going? Am I going the right way? Carnival Court is going to be very disappointing. Really? I heard it's really fun. I mean, I even thought where we would just work. Am I in the right way? Am I heading towards the right way? Oh, thank you. Yeah, what's up, John Adams? I'm calling you out, John Adams. Cause you were on a, you were on another live stream and you were like, Tessa lost her butt. I'm like, huh? How am I gonna lose something I never had? <laughs> That's what I'm calling you out for, John Adams. Oh, keep going. Okay, thanks, Yoli. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, Treatin 62. Yeah, that's actually my uh, uh, seven boa thing. I'm wearing it as my uh, I'm wearing it as a headscarf right now because I lost my organza organs wait organza orgasm orgasm headband in the rain and the wind. But oh, go past the link. Oh, okay. See, this is my goal. I want to be able to be. Oh, thank you, cat. Yeah, so oh <laughs> thank you, Jay Poppy. But um, now I'm excited for uh, I'm excited for these pool parties because, like, honestly, uh, <laughs> then hanging right. Honestly, like, I look, you know, I look, I look, I look too skinny in clothes right now because I lost ten pounds. Oh. But I can't wait to uh, rock my uh, cannabis print bikinis because, like, I look good in the bikini. I just don't look good in clothes right now. So I'm looking forward to these pool parties. Yeah. Woo. Tara, you can know I, I came here uh, six years ago. Came from New York to Vegas. And um, you might not believe this, but, you know, I stay, I, you know, I, I stay in and I work a lot. So... You know, I'm a workaholic, so for years, actually decades, I've been like just staying in and perfecting my fashion. And now I'm super excited because I've I've accomplished what I needed in fashion. Is this? Oh, this is Carnival Court right here. Oh, you saw my carnival court there. It is. Oh, I just passed by this. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of got like a... Oh, all right. So what I really want to actually do is I want to walk through the Caesars Palace before they close. I think they close at 10. Oh, I guess it's not that it's not that happening on a Monday. <laughs> Let's go, Lonnie said chocolate and coffee. Yeah. Now Treasures Island had a Popeyes. It was like it was like twelve dollars for a two piece and uh, and coleslaw and a soda. No, it was like fourteen dollars after the tax at Popeyes. It's at the Treasure Island. Like I wish they had a Popeyes uh, on Fremont Street. <laughs> okay, so I'm heading towards Oh, cool. So you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll, co I'll come back, but I want to go to, into the Caesar's Palace. Because I've been talking about uh, Cleopatra so much. <laughs> you can ask what bands are there. Dan and I streamed on a Monday. Too. You know what? I'll, so what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Uh, go to the Caesars Palace, but I got to cross over, I think. Go in the Harris Piano Bar, yeah. All right, I'll, uh, I'm going to come back because I've been wanting to go to Caesars Palace to look. Uh, I wanted to show you that CBD store that, like, Oh, Cleopatra's barge, yeah. So yeah, Cleopatra was born uh, 69 BC. And she, oh, it's not. Oh, the band is. I just want to do a quick uh, walk through uh, 
the Caesar's Palace and then I'll come back here. <laughs> so thank y'all for your patience. Thanks for joining me. I think it'll be really good to, uh, you know, alternate between the Strip and Fremont. You know, kind of like, you know, do Fremont one night and then do the Strip another night. Now the thing is, what I'm excited about is that if I'm going to do the Strip, like I want to go, I want to hit the clubs. Like I want to go to Omnia and I want to go to Tao. Like Omnia is the club at Caesar's Palace. Oh, look. Yo, a modern day last emperor is living in a concrete palace, munching on fine chocolate, dancing with the dress back lid. I was studying about uh, uh, concrete and and uh, how Rome, how the Roman Empire became so powerful because of their uh, aqueduct engineering and and then the concrete that you know that they used. So, and something about the way that the Colosseum was built, uh, it was, it's a half circle and, and that's how they were able to uh, like magnify the sound. Oh, you know, I was just, I, I was watching History Channel. <laughs> I love that channel. Oh, Joe, are the pesticides cool as a polar bear toenails? Shit. Thank you so much for that. That means a lot. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like the strip will be cool, like for like club, like going out clubbing, like Omni at Caesar's Palace or Tao. So I'm thinking that it's going to be amazing to use my binder clips as my makeshift gimbal for pool parties and you know club parties on the strip. Yeah. Hi, Paula said, hi, just the clubs are cool dance floors. Yeah, so what I have to do is I have to learn how to uh, get so good on my, get, like, manipulate my phone so well that I won't need a gimbal because that's not going to be, they probably won't even let me be recording with a big old gimbal. So I got to be slick and uh, get so good with my phone that I don't need a gimbal and use those, uh, I don't know if you've seen it before, but use those one inch binder clips. What I do is I uh, take two one inch binder clips and I arrange them on the bottom of the phone. And then what's great about it is like you could actually, it, not only it helps you, uh, you know, hold on to the phone without a gimbal, it also like, uh, you know, you can actually situate the phone like on a table. So, you know, I'm planning like, I'm planning a lot of things, you know. <laughs> Remember Julie K, my makeshift gimbal? Buy, you know, a 99 cent gimbal. All you need is two one inch binder clips. Yeah, you gotta use your 420 smarts, right? But I was actually at the uh, Treasure Island and they seemed pretty cool about filming. It's just that, uh, yeah, you don't want to be like clubbing with a big old gimbal. <laughs> or maybe they got to make like some kind of like miniature ga like gimbal. I don't know. But I think the binder clips could work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it actually did work. Oh, Paul, I saw you last night and Elvis, Elvis was rocking it. Yeah, um, what do you call it? I, I remember a couple times that I came out on a Sunday. This was maybe like a year ago and I was so shocked like how good, great they are. You know, they're true musicians because, you know, they they do different genres and, you know, it's really hard to memorize all those words. And I'll, and then also think about it like, like they have, like, it, you know, like, like I'm out there dancing when it's 100 degrees out, but they're performing when it's 100 degrees out. And you got to give it to Rocky though. Whew. Like Rocky has mad stamina. You know <laughs> and like her voice is like more baritone but she has a you know she can hit those high notes you know she really is an amazing musician I give Rob I give Rocky Brown mad props <laughs> but the other guy his name is Brandon and he's really great I know like we all have our opinions on the different cover bands and you know God bless y'all you're entitled to them 
but the bottom line is that they all are great musicians you know <laughs> and that's what's so amazing about Fremont Street you know and they're trying to make their dreams come true you know they're trying to get their singles out you know and they're lucky because while they're trying to make their you know dreams come true as original artists you know they make a, they make good money they make great money on Fremont Street you know because when you do like three sets that's at least three thousand dollars so now now like Tony Marcus he's out there like five times a night that fan is out there five times a night so that's fifteen thousand dollars a week that, that divide that by four there's four what is that five one two three oh yeah divide that by four you know they're making about each of those band members are making uh you know sixteen thousand a month and they're lucky because of Fremont Street because you know they get to do that you know well Tony Mark is probably the richest band out there because they play five times I think Velvet Elvis plays like three times a week but that's still a lot of that's still great money so more power to them because they work hard and they're making people happy and they're singing those covers because that's what people want to hear and they're singing those songs over and over again because people want to hear those songs over and over again you know so you know the, the cover bands are just doing their job so that's why I'm really excited about you know just taking the time to learn the songs and then learn the first four chords of the songs and uh, you know so at least instead of complaining that they play the songs over and over again you know let's you know, learn the songs. Let's learn the first four chords. <laughs> yes, the forum shops. Now I want to see if the CBD store is still... Oh, see, look. This is some shit right here. Oh, are they closed? Now this store, are they open? This is what I want to show you. Marco Press, I knew I should have stuck with my guitar. See? Now that's what I'm saying. Like... Put it this way, like, uh, wow, wait, five, wait, yeah, they're making like, 50, if you're making 15000 a month, that means you're making 180000 a year. Now, this is the store that I was talking to you about. Oh, thank you, Rob Dale. See, Rob Dale was learning, what, what happened, Rob Dale, was one of your sugar mamas? Was she a math teacher? Was she a math? Was she a college math professor? <laughs> Rob Dale. Rob Dale admitted that he uh, was a sugar baby and he had sugar mamas. Right, Rob Dale? <laughs> All right, so this is the CVD store. Now check this shit out. These prices are astronomical. Anyway, you can't see it's their clothes. Oh yeah, Rob Dale. Was she a, was she a math? Was she a college? Was, what did you learn, Rob Dale? Calculus? I bet you. Wait, what happened? Your sugar mama was like a calculus professor. What's up? Looking beautiful. And now Rob Dale is an expert on calculus. What happened, Rob Dale? Are you good at calculus? <laughs> you was calculating all them orgasms, right? Shit. So, anyways, that store is closed. But that uh, CBD ointment, that two ounce ointment that I have. Oh, Julie Kim, I'm sending you. Keep in mind, y'all, I'm waiting on the samples to uh, send out to y'all. You know, uh, you know, it's gonna take me like maybe four or five days to get all the samples, and I'm gonna send it out to everyone. So basically, what my assessment of Caesar's Palace is, Caesar's. than New York, New York. So Caesars Pass really gives me, like this reminds me of like Soho in Manhattan. Now Soho is on the west side of Little Italy. You know, it goes Chinatown, Little Italy, and then uh, Soho, like this reminds me of Soho. Rob Dale putting, put, put, putting that cast, now this reminds me of like 57th Street, like this store. Like, this is a store that you would see, like, you know, on 57th Street by Central Park. Like, this is a type of... So, 
and uh, Yoli, like Yoli, and then y'all were so lucky to stay. Like this reminds me of a store like on 57th Street. It's called the. Uh, but. But yeah, I definitely want to go back to uh, Carnival Court and get a drink and listen to the band. But I just wanted to show you. So now. So I have a connection where you can get that CBD oint, where I could get that uh, CBD ointment for a really great price. So, you know, I know treating, like I'm going to be sending you a sample and some other people the CBD ointment. But, um, you know, I, like I'm not going to lie, it actually does kind of work. I mean, it's not going to take away the, it's, it's actually like, well, that's why I've been, it, well, I, I'm not going to lie, it actually works to the point where I feel tired and I rub it on me and then I want to come out. It's been inspiring me to live stream. It's been energizing me to live stream. <laughs> Lala, what well, does a treat? Oh, just like, you know, bo like body pain, like, you know, you know, like, let's just say like, uh, you know, instead of taking an ibuprofen, well, put it this way. If you're in pain, instead of taking like, you know, 800 milligrams of uh, like Motrin or something, you know, you could actually maybe take like 400 milligrams of the, uh, thank you, of the ibuprofen, oh wait, of the ibuprofen, and then, you know, and then keep in mind, like, ibuprofen or any painkiller is gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes, uh, you know, to kick in, and the cream, what it does is just compliments, it's kind of like the icing on the cake, what it does is, you know, you rub it in, and 10 minutes later, you start feeling better while you're waiting for your medicine to kick in. So, so I'm waiting on that should be coming uh, Friday. So I can send it out to everyone. Oh, look, this is Weekends with Adele. Now Adele, ooh, now that is a true singer. Julie K. Paul, what, what store are you talking about? In What's up, Penny Marmar? Yeah. Ooh. So I wanted to show you that CBD store. They they like really they charge like wow like that two ounce thing. They charge like hundred and fifty dollars for that. So when they when you know they're really like you know overcharging people. I mean I guess because it's Caesar's Palace, but I mean I'll do a uh, Container Park. They have some CBD stores. Yes. We were so blessed to be able to stay at the Caesars. Yeah, that's amazing, but you know, you deserved it. <laughs> this is RG Par RGB Par Oh yeah, so you know that stuff works. Now the problem is, is that, you know, how do you know if their product actually works? You know, they don't give out samples. And then it's like, Yeah, it was nice to meet you, RGV Paranormal Lockdown. La la, yeah. So this re this really reminds me of Manhattan, you know? Like that's something you'd see in Soho. Wow, look at that big old statue. Oh, shit. All right, I'll do like, I'll walk here, I'll walk through here for a half hour, then we'll go to the music. <laughs> music. You know, and you know what's crazy too is that, you know, even when people like Adele make it or Lady Gaga make it, well, I'm going up the stairs. What's crazy is that, even when you do make it in your Lady Gaga or your, uh, you know, Stevie Mix or uh, Adele, there's still people that will say that they can't sing. I'm just saying, no matter how, I'm just saying, there's still people that think like I don't get it. There's still people out there that will say stuff like Lady Gaga can't sing or Adele can't sing or uh, or Stevie Mix can't sing, and it's like, I mean, I'm just like. How could you say that they're amazing singers? But what I'm thinking is that there are people that are tone deaf. 
and they can't hear all the nuances of the notes so like if you actually everybody has their own taste but if you actually think that people like Adele or Lady Gaga or Stevie Nicks can't sing that's crazy because objectively they are incredible singers but you know I gotta have more empathy and more understanding as a person and I gotta realize that maybe they don't appreciate uh, music or they don't appreciate singers because they're just tone deaf you know like that could be the main reason that they're just told that they don't hear the tones because I'm a music fanatic and I certain songs I'm sensitive to all the tones and all the notes and there are some songs that just make me cry because it's so beautiful you know I can hear like every single note and every single tone <laughs> that's all I'm saying or honestly it could be it could be it could be a powerful woman thing because Stevie Nicks and Lady Gaga and Adele have proven themselves to be incredible women of power and I think that's another issue that happens that people just don't want to uh, recognize your power especially when you're a woman I mean it, or it could just simply that they're tone deaf <laughs> So anyways, I should just have sympathy for them because, you know, if they're tone deaf and they can't hear these beautiful songs and these amazing singers, that's so terrible. What kind of world do they live in? You know, that they can't hear those tones. We got to sympathize with them. <laughs> you know, let's take the high road, get that 420 IQ. You know, let's take the high road and have understanding for people. Maybe they're just tone deaf. But, oh God, that would be so painful to be toned deaf. <laughs> I'm just saying, we got to evolve and become better people. Anyways, I'm going to go back to Carnival Court. I just wanted to show you that. I, I want to do another... I want to do another live stream where I go like more into Caesar's Palace. But I want to go back to Carnival Court. Because that's what I came for, the music. Music! Makes the people... Yeah, so, <laughs> so you guys, y'all, let's, let's say a prayer for the people who are tone deaf. They can't hear the music, so they can't appreciate it. It's not their fault. <laughs> like, people think I'm crazy because I'll hear a song. Like, every time I hear Dreams by Stevie Nicks, I start crying. It happened to me last time when Atomic Radio uh, played. Now that's an I don't Julie K. Don't you just love uh, that new band, Atomic Radio, on Fremont Street? And you were saying that the lead singer. I wish I knew her name. But you were saying she's like a. She's kind of like if if Rocky Brown and Shandis had a baby. Woo! We gotta get back to the music, y'all. Woo! Well, thank you for showing. Are you going to see Madonna? Oh my God, really? Wow. Damn, honestly, oof. I don't think I could afford her tickets. But I do love Madonna. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but... Like, what do you call it? Uh... I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Who would you go see if you had a choice, Adele or Madonna? <laughs> Are we going back to the carnival court? The music, I hear the music. Just do it, yeah. Lala said, I just got tickets to see Beyonce. Oh, LaDonna gives you a ticket with Madonna. Philip, Philip said neither. Yoli said Madonna. Ooh. Cindy Kerr Madonna for short, right? Ooh. We love Madonna. <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm going the wrong way. Adele has a far better range than Madonna. Yeah, I mean, Adele, yeah, objectively, probably, uh, 
Adele is a better singer, maybe, but um, I guess Madonna has Madonna is more, you know, she's more of a social. Madonna is more what I'm trying to be. She's she's a, she's a social revolutionary, you know, <laughs> like. It's not just her music, she used her music to empower herself and empower women to be unafraid of their sexual desires. And uh, yeah, I think that like Madonna definitely has more, is more of a social revolutionary. I mean, uh, same thing with like, with like Biggie and Tupac, like both Biggie and Tupac were super tight MCs. But Tupac was more of a social revolutionary. You know, he had more... Damn, somewhere in Las Vegas, my black organza orgasm headband is somewhere. <laughs> well, that's good to know, like... That's what I'm gonna say, like, maybe I'm gonna, you know, put some, uh... Barrettes in there next time I wear it for the wind, because it gets crazy windy in Vegas. Woo! But this is fun! Oh, shit. talking about more 90s and that and now she just flaked out yeah I guess so right then didn't she get those uh, butt implants too <laughs> somebody was like why don't you go get some butt implants I'm like what I thought you know I think it costs like you know twenty thousand dollars to get some butt implants yeah. but then you got to sit on those butt implants right I mean, do any of y'all know anybody with a butt implant? At our moment. Uh, not the, uh, you know, normal FTA. And then what do you do like when big butts go out of style? You know what I mean? Or big butts are, will never go out of style? <laughs> like what if you do... What do you do if you get those big old butt implants? And then the, the big butt thing goes out of style? <laughs> it would be nice if there was... That would hurt, right, Cindy Kirkman? I know. Oh, thank you, Paula. Yes. And, like, I had been, uh, thank you, Paula. Where are you, Paula? Because I had been avoiding the strip because Fremont Street is so conveniently close to me. And, uh, mainly. Lala says she's stuck with a big ass for life. Yo, I think, uh, I think, you know what, they better keep the big butt, they better keep the big butt thing going, yo. It's your turn now, y'all. Yo, they better keep this big old butt thing going. I mean, do you know how many, like, amazing songs have been inspired by big old butts? <laughs> There's a lot of songs out there that talk about some big old butts. They like that shit. You know, and it's inspiring a lot of people. <laughs> I never heard I never heard no song about no skinny ass I never heard a song like that There's so many big butt songs Ain't nobody singing about no skinny asses <laughs> Oh Lizzo is the queen of big butts right? Oh Paula you're in Texas Now Another thing The main reason why I'm excited about my mushroom chocolates is because when you go when you try to when you when you go to a club or a pool party they are so gestapo they will search every they will search your bag every every part of your bag I'm talking like you could have a little purse like a little knockoff Chanel purse and they will go through everything when you when you try to get into the club they will open your bag, they will search it left, they will go inside the lining, they will open up your wallet, they will look through everything. And just to hit a club in Vegas, just to get in the door, you feel so violated. You know, like I understand that they're like looking for, uh, you know, guns and, and weapons, but they go through everything, every little thing. And, and so, like you can't even sneak a... You can't even sneak a vape pen. So they are so strict. Because I went to a pool party 
like at the Marquee Day Club. And then I thought like, oh wow, I could like, you know, just at least sneak in the vape pen. And uh, they will like, they will make you, they, and the people have been confident, and they don't even let you um, have a tobacco vape pen. Like, I don't know if y'all smoke tobacco, that's not a good idea. But if y'all are doing your tobacco vapes, you, can, you can't even sneak that. They'll make you throw that away. So, that's why I'm excited. Oh, shit. That's why I'm excited about my mushroom chocolates. I could take a couple pieces and hit the pool park. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm excited about uh that's why I'm excited about the uh, mushroom chocolates because I hit a I went to um Yeah, I'm kinda sad about my organza orgasm. But now I know like to tell people, you know, on a windy day, like put a barrette in the back. Oh, they don't melt on you. Yeah. And so, and that's how strict it is. And honestly, it's because the government doesn't want you, the government wants you to drink. And they want you to smoke cigarettes. Alcohol and cigarettes are the government's drug. And they like that because, you know, uh, you know, they're trying, you know, if you're like collecting this, oh, thank you, Josh Mariscal. Yeah. So that's why I'm telling you, that's the main reason why, well, okay, the main, I'm not going to lie to you, the main reason is financial, it gets very expensive to hit the, I'll be, but I mean, I'm not going to lie to you that, you know, the main reason why I'm not hitting these clubs on the strip is because financially it's expensive and then and then second of all you know they they search you know they totally they pretty much like rape you when you get in the club either they rape you they, they take they rape you of your money and then you can't then you gotta then you gotta you know buy a bottle for a thousand dollars you know yeah, thank you so much for the super chat, Josh. Oh, let me let me walk through the link, y'all. So that's Carnival Court. You're right. It is. It's just. It's not that exciting, huh? Let me go through the link, y'all. Mark Gates. That's why I just. So basically, yeah, basically what it is, I just want to explain something before we, uh, we're walking through the link. Because people, you know, basically, in, if you want to be an upstanding citizen, basically they want you to drink yourself to death and smoke cigarettes yourself to death. And then people like me, you know, that want to live to 100, and I don't smoke cigarettes and I don't drink and I only smoke weed. People like me, you know, they want to put, they, they want to put away in prison, you know. So, you know, I'm just saying it's not just, you know, but I'm, I, I'm not going to, you know, listen. I'm not, I don't. And, and that's another reason why uh, I look good for my age. I don't drink a lot and I don't smoke cigarettes but more power to you if you if you drink and you smoke and you like that shit that's more power to you all I'm saying is that the government is trying to force us to be alcoholics and chain smokers and all I want to do is just have fun and smoke weed and and that's the main reason why um you know I want to uh like Wow, now I just convinced myself about why I don't want to hit these clubs. <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting you know, this is what happened to me. Now, there's a Hustler, you know, the Hustler Club is a strip club, right? So, now, if you go, if you go anywhere, let me walk through this again. 
I thought this was carnival court. Uh, during the weekends, this is fun, so. So what happened was, you know, there's a hustler club, it's, you know, the hustler strip club, but uh, at night they have a party, they have an after party, and it goes from 2 a.m. to 8 p.m. And it's like, it turns into a regular club, not a strip club. It's the hustler club on the strip. So they have like where you buy, where where you buy a, a bottle and instead of paying a thousand dollars for the bottle, you pay, you pay $450, $450. So I was hanging out with these people and uh, he, he ended up buying like two bottles he ended up buying like two bottles, it was like $900, like, and it was the four of us, and I didn't even drink, you know, so, I mean, I had like maybe one drink, and what happens is that when you buy a bottle, I'm just telling you the reality, when, because I used to be into the hype, you know, I was all thinking that's the cool thing to do, like in New York or, or Vegas, like you think you're a hot shot, because, oh, you know, you're, hanging, you know, you're drinking bottles with the models and all that, but the reality of that whole thing is that, you spend all this money on the bottle and then what happens is you can't dance around because now you gotta watch your bottle so you can't like move around the club now because now you're like stuck by your bottle and then what happens is you have all these like mooches that come to your table and they're coming to your table to get a free drink so they come in there and uh, they expect you to uh, like pour them a drink, you know? So then now you're like pouring them a drink. And then, you know, you give them a drink and then most of them are, from, this is from my experience. They're mooches, so they just, they come in there for the free drink. Then they come in for the kill. They come in for the kill, which is, do you have, thank you so much for the drink. <laughs> they come in for the kill. You know, because they think, you know, they got boobs, they got ass, they got tits and ass. I'm just telling you the story. They come in for the kill. This is why they come in for the kill. Oh, by the way, do you have cocaine? <laughs> it's like, then they want to mooch off the alcohol. Then they think you're some kind of high roller. That you got free cocaine, that you got cocaine. And then, a lot of times, like, you know, they're so strict about the weed. And then cocaine is a lot more discreet, you know, co you know, you know what I'm saying? Like cocaine is a lot more discreet than marijuana because it doesn't smell and all of that. So then you got people doing cocaine because they can't be discreet about the weed. And then they're, then they're spending all their money. And then what happened with me was, so the dude was like, yo, you got to pay me, uh, yo, you got to pay me, uh, you know, your part of the bill was $250. So I was like, fuck, and I didn't even drink anything. And all I had was these girls go, hi, hi, um, thank you for the drink. Do you have cocaine? I'm like, oh, and I hate cocaine. I can't stand cocaine. I hate those drugs. I hate meth. I hate cocaine. My body hates those drugs. That's why I love weed so much. Because my, anyways, so the whole point of the story is that you think those people are balling because they're sitting there getting overcharged for alcohol. And then a lot of these people are only drinking alcohol because they'd rather smoke weed, but then they can't. So then what happens is, you know, you spend all that money doing something you don't even really like. And let you know, and even if you were like a, like a real drinker, you know, I mean, if you're a real drinker, like you could you could have stayed home and, and, and like bought a bottle and just hung out with your bottle instead of paying thousands of dollars. But anyway, long story short, is that's just the reality of Vegas. When you when you're just a pothead and you don't like alcohol and you don't like cocaine and you're not a cigarette smoker, that that's the reality of Vegas. It's like they they want to force people to become alcoholics and chain smokers and gamblers that's all i'm saying it's hard out here for a pothead that's all i'm saying I just want you to you know what i'm talking about they want you to you know they don't want you to do weed because they want you to do they want you to do the uh the drink the smoking and the cigarettes i mean the alcohol and you know what that pays for 
the alcohol and the cocaine, what does it do? It helps pay for all those rehabs. Now I've talked to people who are like addicted to alcohol and cocaine, and there's a lot of people out there too that they're alcoholics and they get addicted to cocaine because they do the cocaine so they can stay up and drink more. <laughs> you know, there's like, you know, it's horrible. There's a lot of people that are alcoholics and cokeheads. So, and then what do they do? What now they're alcoholics and cokeheads? And now all these rehab companies, all these rehab businesses, they make a killing. They make so much money from these rehabs. And people are paying like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to go to rehab because they're addicted to alcohol. <laughs> And they're addicted to cocaine. And all they wanted to do was smoke a goddamn joint and hear some music. That's all they really wanted to do. And now they're fucking alcohol cokeheads. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm talking too much about it. Maybe I need to write a movie about it. But that's, I just have to put my two cents in. Just when I tell you the story, all I'm asking for is sympathy. You know, I only, I smoke weed because I don't want to be an alcoholic and I don't want to be a cokehead and I don't like, and I don't want to be addicted to cigarettes because I see people how I, you know, how old they look. Like people that are so old looking because they smoke cigarettes. <laughs> all right, we're going back to carnival, but that long story short, that's all I wanted to say that all I'm saying is they make it hard for people just to smoke a joint because they don't want to be alcoholics, they don't want to be coke heads, they don't want to be meth heads. And things are so twisted, you got, things are so twisted that you got meth heads and coke heads looking down on potheads. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm just saying, like, have some sympathy for, me, sympathy for me. I'm just an innocent pothead that does not want to be a cigarette smoker. I don't want to be an alcoholic. I don't want to be a cokehead. I don't want to be a meth head because I do have an addictive personality. And if I chose to be a fucking alcoholic or a cokehead or a meth head, I'd be dead already. So I'm just trying to live life, y'all. Just have some sympathy. Damn. Oh, I missed the super chat. Oh. Yeah, isn't that crazy, Carlo? Meth heads judging potheads. But, you know, it's, it's not totally their fault. It's because the judgment is institutionalized in the laws and in the, you know, it, marijuana has been demonized. See, 1920 to 1933, you had prohibition. Now, before, before 1933, every marijuana was not, a, was not criminalized. So what happened was, what happened was, actually from 1920 to 1933, when alcohol was illegal, marijuana was legal like it's always been. See, what happened was, in 1933, when they legalized alcohol again, they had to demonize marijuana because not because it was a moral thing but because the alcohol companies saw marijuana as competition and the alcohol companies have money and they lobby the government so the only reason why marijuana has been <laughs> criminalized is not because of moral reasons it's because of financial reasons so you know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I lived during Prohibition. I would, I would, could have been smoking weed legally. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, Carlo gave me, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, I mean, I won't talk about it anymore. Like, maybe I'll write a book about it, but all I'm saying is that uh, that's what happens. Uh, that's what happens, you know? The, the government and society always, you know, they 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 live in our heads. They try to control our heads. You know, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. But meanwhile, I think Oregon is the only state that uh, mush psilocybin mushrooms are legal. So somebody was saying Michigan, but they're saying not quite yet, or Colorado. So that's why I've just been like. 
getting so excited about these uh, mushroom chocolates because right like I actually uh, like I only actually just took one piece and I don't even have like a need to smoke weed right now I'm so good like smoking I mean eating these mushroom chocolates is like actually making me not even want to smoke weed it's so good I don't know y'all so I think there's oh fun with the Italian German guy weed is 100% legal in Michigan yeah yes they demonize marijuana because they can't control like alcohol and tobacco. They make millions from the product and associated illnesses and treatment. Yes, especially the rehabs, you know. And um, basically, and then you know, you know who else makes a lot of money too? Oh, I didn't. Don't even get me started with this one. Uh, the funeral homes, they're making a killing. Like from the opiate people and and you know if you're a heavy drinker you're that you're you don't live that long if you're a heavy i had a friend who was a heavy uh he was a heavy uh smoker and he died at 50 51 you know and he was like a really cool guy too and he built my beautiful store he was an amazing guy and uh he died at 51 because he was a, he was a chain smoker and uh and then there's people that are heavy drinkers, like they don't make it. And some of it is because, that some of the reason why some of these heavy drinkers die is because they try to stop drinking. And when they go cold turkey, if, if you go cold turkey from being an alcoholic, that will kill you too. So you're you're screwed with alcohol. If you're not, I mean, I'm sorry y'all, if y'all have any like alcohol issues, I hope you can work it out, but, oh. <laughs> Oh, hola, from Cal I'm also addicted to Tom Ford, men's cologne. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, we'll walk through. Hey, my friend! Hey, you down Watch here tonight? <laughs> yeah, because you. Wait, look, my friend, uh, Roy. You told me to come down here, but it's kind of slow right, on I did, a Monday. Didn't I? Yeah, I'm busy trying to go down here, yeah. It's kind of slow, right? Yeah, they, just got, they got a break now. Oh, the band's on a break? Yeah, break, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't go down on Mondays. The band's, I don't like the band's down there on Monday nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it oh shit. <laughs> but I don't know, it doesn't seem that exciting, no? No, they play good music though. Oh, they do? Where are you going to sit? Oh yeah? Well, let's go. Are you going to sit now? I'm going to Oh, okay. I'll wait here. Alright, I'm waiting for my friend. Yeah, so I'm waiting for my friend that we're going to hang out. He has got to go to the bathroom. Oh, so this is a carnival court. Oh, we're at, this is the bar, it's called Carnival Court. And check this out, yeah. So, do you remember, do you remember the movie, do you remember the movie with uh, Vincent Price? Isn't that the name? Uh, he owned, uh, he owned the funeral home. What's the name of that movie with Vincent Price? And he owned the funeral home. And nobody was dying in his town. So what they had to do, they had to like go out there and kill people so they could make money you know, as a funeral home. Y'all, I don't know, y'all know that movie? Like, it's with Vincent Price. Oh, damn. It's a movie where, you know, he owns a funeral home and there's no business because everybody is living and no one's dying. So then he goes on this uh, killing rampage just so he could get some uh, funeral home customers. You know what I'm talking about? So... Well, whatever that movie is, I'm waiting for my friend now because at least I have a friend to hang out with. Uh, Cause it's kind of boring, like otherwise. Yeah. So, do you know what movie I'm talking about? Yeah, alcohol. Which oh, the comedy of terrors. Thank you, Dev JB. Where like the business is slow and they got to kill people, so so that they could have some funeral home business. Well, yeah, it's like you know. Like marijuana doesn't kill people, which means, and and marijuana doesn't uh, reduce people to desperation where they got to be in the rehab. So there's no business in that, you know. We, we live in a death economy, you know. People are making money, like, you know. But hey, but the way that I negotiate all of that, instead of being judgmental about it, what I'm how I negotiate all of that is I say, you know what, like. Vegas, like all the drinkers and all the gamblers, 
uh, and the cigarette smokers and the ones that go into the clubs and, and you know you know you know like you know they're the ones who are paying for all of this the, all the drinkers and gamblers they pay for all this this is what the drinkers and gamblers are pay, have paid for so the way that I negotiate that is I think I told you about this Julie K is that at least in America America's not perfect but Compared to, let's say, like uh, Saudi Arabia or China or let Afghanistan, that in America at least we can choose to die slow from the poisons we choose instead of getting executed right away. So that's how I negotiate that, that at least in America we can choose our poison and we can choose to die slow from our poison. But the sad thing is, is that people who are chain smokers and heavy drinkers, they don't die slow. You know, they're lucky to live past 50, you know? But hey, that's why Jose Vegas, I'm waiting for my friend to uh, come out of the bathroom and we're gonna go inside. He's the one who told me to go, he's the one who told me to come here. Yes, they make a lot of money off of us. So that's how, you know, that's why I'm not gonna, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to know the reality, but I'm not going to be bitter about it. And I'm going to negotiate that and realize that, you know, that, you know. Now, the, the money, they, that they, they may not, see, that's the thing, though, too. Now, who mentioned Thunder Down Under? Who mentioned Magic Mike? Now, to me, if, if I go to Magic Mike or if I go to Thunder Down Under, you know, I probably will drink. Damn. Like, <laughs> if I'm gonna drink, like, I'm gonna go to Magic Mike or Thunder Down Under because, damn, like, like, a, that's, thank you, Kat. I look, you know what? If I'm gonna drink, I'm going to Thunder Down Under. You know, and, and more power to you guys. Like, you guys that go to the strip clubs, at least you're gonna drink, at least you're gonna get some tits and ass in your face. <laughs> so I'll go to Thunder Down Under. I'll go to Magic Mike and I'll have some man, some, some man's is close. Oh, do you work at Chippendales? <laughs> oh, yeah, fun with the Italian German guy. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like a, a pothead. Like, if I'm, you know, if, now, this is what I figured out. This is crazy. Now that I've been like, I, I only did a little bit of the mushroom chocolate. And it totally is like making me not even care to smoke a joint. Like I'm feel, it's making me feel so good that I don't even need to like smoke a joint. Wait, maybe I should smoke a joint. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I saying? I didn't smoke, I should smoke. And then hit this place, oh shit. You see dead people? What was the name again? The Comedy of Terrors, you said? 40 people. No. This is amazing. This is what I would tell people. And then, you know, and then and uh, magic mushrooms are not addictive. So, so like, uh, what do you call it? This could be, I'm actually really excited because, I'm actually really excited because magic mushrooms are not addictive. And I'm telling you the truth right now that the magic mushrooms every step in eating this chocolate makes me not even like want to smoke a joint. And that's crazy because I'm a total pothead. Yo, so I'm gonna be proud of this magic mushroom thing. Damn. Yeah, magic mushrooms are not legal and um, killing people isn't legal either. But, uh, but it's legal. Yeah, like it's ironic in this country. Things that make, things that keep you alive are criminalized. And then things that make you die, like opiates, are celebrated because the government says it's okay and it, it's uh, institutionalized and rationalized. So, you know, you can't make a judgment call on something just because it's illegal or illegal. Slavery was legal in this country and slavery was wrong, but slavery was legal. So you can't, you know, say, you can't you know think that oh something is wrong because it's illegal and something is right because it's legal it was legal to kill Jews in Nazi Germany just because it's legal didn't make it right 
slavery was considered legal. If you were a slave and you tried to escape from your slave master, you were considered illegal. You weren't even considered a human being. So I'm just gonna say, as a, as a, you know, if I were like, if I weren't a fashion designer, I'd be a lawyer, and I'd be a, I'd be like a, and honestly, if I were a lawyer, I'd be a killer lawyer. I'd win all my cases. Cause I got that killer instinct. <laughs> all I'm saying. As a matter of fact, oh, where's my friend? He still hasn't hit the bathroom. As a matter of fact, I might even go to law school and fight for the 420 cause. Because I do have my bachelor's degree. Oh, wait, uh. This is really amazing. Like, I'm so happy on my mushrooms. I have no need to even smoke a joint. But I just might, just to see how it feels. <laughs> All right, be patient. I'm waiting for the band to come back. Oh, thank you, Kelly. This is what I... Thank you, Truth and Faith, because, like, I have to admit, y'all, there's something that you gotta know about me. Like, I have, like, killer instincts. And when I do something, like, I'm very, you know, competitive about it. Like, I'm just, you know, I don't know, I'm a very, like, compassionate person. But when it comes to winning, like, I'm a shark, just so you know. Like, Tessa O gotta win. I'm a, you know, I may look like a dolphin, but when it comes to winning, like, if you if you put me in a competition, like, that's, that killer instinct just comes over me. Like, I have to admit, like, and I used to suck at sports, but when it came to, like, spelling bees and competitions and test taking and, like, like, but, you know, when we did, like, oral reports, I'd come, I was, like, I'd come in and memorize the whole thing. Like, that's how killer of a comp competitor I am. Like, we used to do reports. Like, I think I was, like, eight years old. Like, you know, I used to, uh, I used to do my reports, and I used to write them over ten times again so I'd know it by heart. And I, and I'd do my whole report all by heart, and I'd slam it down. And I think that's the reason why I like uh, rapping so much, you know? Cause <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, because... Tessa O get good. Oh yeah, wait, do you have a... Oh. And this is what I do as a... This is what I would do. This is, this is something that I'm good at as a lawyer. If I were a lawyer, I'm very good at using somebody's own words to... to uh, Like, I'm, I could, I'll remember everything somebody says and, and um, what I'll do is I'll win the case by using their own words against them. Like, that's how killer I am. <laughs> like, I'm so killer. Oh, wait, uh, that's how you gotta win as a lawyer, yo. You use their own words against them, you know? Let them choke on their own rope. Oh, may I get, can you like this? Yeah. If you don't mind. I'm just being honest, y'all. Okay. Thank you, yes. Yeah, Tessa, the Cougar attorney. Yeah, then I'll be, a, I'll be able to afford these 25-year-olds. <laughs> no, I'm just... All I gotta say is that... This is so amazing. I only took, a, I only took one... Oh. All right, I'm gonna go inside. I'm waiting for the band. Oh, I think he fell in. Yeah, let me just go inside. Welcome, truck and landlord. Wow, I want to say, y'all, if any of y'all are smoking a lot of pot and you want to cut down, I think the, the mushroom chocolate is the way to go.
Well, I smoke like... Oh. Yeah, it's cold, huh? Yeah. It's cold, right? The band's coming soon. But that's never stopped me. Oh, the droids are really good. This is probably like more fun when it's like nights out, right? It's more like Saturdays are better. Or... Oh, yeah, I lost my hat.
just I guess this just proves that This is making me miss Velvet Elvis and it's making me miss Fremont Street. Yeah, and it's hard to light a joint, right? Oh, David Butler, thank you so much. That's so appreciated. Thank you, David Butler, for your $15 super chat. that no wonder everybody's streaming on La on streaming uh, no wonder everybody's streaming on Fremont Street I think that I need to do other streams besides Fremont Street just to make us realize how special Fremont Street is you know if you're always doing Fremont Street you like people start taking it for granted and they start complaining that the bands have the same music and but the reason why those bands are playing those songs is because those songs are great and that's what people want to hear. And uh, I think like every now and then coming to the strip just makes you uh, appreciate Fremont Street even more. <laughs> you know, I mean, and like the, the mall that we were at. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Oh, no, no, I'm saying that I, you know, like all those songs they play on Fremont Street, I want to hear them over and over again. I love those songs. And uh, coming out here tonight makes me realize, like, Coming out tonight on a, you know, makes me realize that. <laughs> I don't know, Fremont Street is more fun. Should we go to Fremont Street? Huh? Should we go to Fremont? Uh, I like the band on your night. Huh? I'm not too worried about the other ones. Yeah. Let's go there and it's warm, right? I need food, you gotta stay up. 
That's fine, let's go. And it's inside, right? Yeah. Alright, we're going to the uh, piano like bar. The piano place. Oh, yeah. awesome, let's go. Yeah. With that. No, but somebody was talking about that. Let's go. Yeah, we're going to the piano. Somebody mentioned that. We could just stand, right? I'm so glad I bumped into you. You're the yeah. one who made me want to come. I'm hanging out with my friend Roy. I forgot, now, I forgot I told you about this. <laughs> how far do you live from this strip here? Right there? Yeah, you must be rich. Is it like a, what is it, like a hotel? Or? Oh, you're saying that you live in the Harris? No, I'm right here. No, I mean like you live near here? No, I live on uh, Charleston and Hostel over there in Hostel. Right? What's that? Where's Hostel that? is like a five bedroom with uh, three, four, fifty people in Oh, you got like a lot of roommates. Like it's like four, four, forty-five a night. Yeah. Who mentioned the uh, Harris Bar, Harris Piano Bar? That sounds cool. Yeah, Tessa O don't give up though. Oh what? Oh, this is fun. I like it's warm. Oh, where do you want to sit? We can sit here. It's cool, I guess. I think it's cool. We can sit here, right? Yeah. Oh, it's nice and warm at least, not freezing. Right? Yeah, they play piano, they both play two of the animals and they music. What's up, Eugene Gonzalez? Welcome back. We're indoors, it's not freezing. This is the Harris uh, Piano Bar, yo. That's awesome, man. Hey, do you. Thank you. 
thank you, Lala. I'm actually a Korean. I was born in Korea, but I came to the States when I was five. Tessa O is a nightmare and an abomination. So, you know, my culture hates Tessa O. So I'm not really crazy about Korean culture because Korean culture hates me. Because <laughs> I'm a woman and I'm bold and I'm outspoken and I'm a troublemaker and uh, I'm everything that Korea hates. So, you know, I don't, I don't take offense if you got issues with Korean culture or or anything like that because I just like the food baby like you know I have no pride for the culture whatsoever because <laughs> the culture hates my guts Korean culture hates my guts Grand Cam, yeah you thought I wish I was related to Sandra oh she needs to lend me some money and you know damn I wish I was related to Sandra oh <laughs> She needs to lend me some money. She needs to put Sandra needs to put some money in my cash app. But, right. <laughs> Oregon City bike ride. That is what made me. What made me my uh, the fact that uh, my culture hates me. That's what made me. Oh, Yuji gets first Korean, first generation North Korean refugees. Yeah, I'm a midnight toker. And. Um, uh, what do you call it? And uh, and like, uh, what do you call it? I talk back, you know, and uh, like, 
uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, like I, you know, I've been beaten down. You know, I've been, you know, beat up a lot growing up. You know, for being so rebellious. And um, and my sister used to be scared of getting beat up, so she used to just like bow down to my parents and tell them they're right. And when I was eight years old, I didn't know who James Brown was, but I was like, go ahead, hit me, because I don't agree with you. So I grew up getting beaten down a lot. But see, bruises go away. I never sold my soul. See, my sister sold her soul because she was afraid of getting beaten down. I protected my soul and got beaten down a lot. And that, that's why I'm such a free spirit. I fought for my freedom. You know, I, I, I've been beaten down for hours so I could fight for my freedom. And Tom Petty had said that when he... Tom Petty's music is so amazing and I've always loved Tom Petty. And Tom Petty said the same thing. He said that he used to get, he used to get beaten down for hours. And music was his salvation. And that's what, you know, is my salvation, my creativity and um and uh you know my freedom to express myself and you know honestly like how you doing here we are in las vegas Thank i'm you. nicholas cage yeah how are you you guys are having a good time hang out have a good time live life to the fullest thank you and honestly honestly somebody last night said somebody last night said oh your parents would be so disappointed your family must be so disappointed in you you know, I guess because I was shrooming and I like to smoke weed. And it's like, you know what? That goes both ways. You know, they're dis my family's disappointed in me and I'm disappointed in them. And honestly, if I have, I'm, I don't like to play the blame game. But, you know, after you like stand up for yourself a lot and you get beaten down a lot, you know, that's when I started wanting to smoke marijuana. Because, you know, I was like crying and I was in physical pain from getting beaten down. And I was crying, and I was depressed, and 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 uh, that's when I turned to weed. I turned to marijuana because getting beat up all the time, just because I wanted to express myself, and just because I wanted the freedom to, and because I dared to talk back, and I and I, you know, you can't. If you sell your soul, you'll never get it back. I never sold my soul. I, I took the beatings, and I took the beat. I took the beatings. I remember being in soap, getting beat down. Like, to the point that I couldn't walk for two... I couldn't even go to school the next day. I got beaten down so hard. So, I'm just saying that uh, marijuana... I turned to marijuana because I was just getting beaten down. And, and I wanted to be happy. And then I was depressed. And so I smoked so much weed. And then the weed saved me. <laughs> you know, I'm not look, asking for y'all to, uh, you know, feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you exactly, you know, who I am and what I am. And, uh, and uh, when you're a sensitive person, you know, you know, I, I get people that are so strong that they don't need to smoke weed or they don't need to do shoes. But I need that shit because, you know, I, my, my childhood was sad and I needed to smoke weed to be happy. And I'm not going to make excuses for that. And if there's people out there that think I'm some kind of junkie, like, I don't care. I'm living. I'm not dead. <laughs> Thank you, Truth 62. No, I'm just being really honest. So, you know, yes, I fought for my freedom because, I, you know, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna sell. I didn't. I never. I took the beating because I didn't want to sell my soul. And my sister, she didn't want to get beat up, so she sold her soul. And she's like so, like my sister is so, is like so bitter, and she has no spirit. And I'm so glad that y'all can recognize me as a free spirit because I fought hard. I fought hard for that spirit. And I'm still fighting every day for my spirit because I will never sell my soul. You know, Cindy Kirby, that's why you drink. Thank you, Cindy. Everybody has their dependencies. And let's not judge each other. Like, we all have, you know, you know our tragedies and let's just be more understanding of each other. <laughs> yes, Julie K. Yes, Carla Gambino, thank you. And I think another thing that I think is really amazing is that by, by me sharing my story, I'm not trying to like get y'all to feel sorry for me. And uh, 
and you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not using this to try to get super chats. I'm really not. I'm only being honest because I feel that if my honesty is worth it, because if I can be honest and I could touch, even if I can just reach out to one person, or even if I save one person's life, like that person's life, you know, could mean, you know, saving millions of lives because that person could you know have a positive impact on a million people so when you save when you save someone's life you know you're saving millions of lives because that person could help millions of people you know so get yeah, they said be hurt when I'm a stuffer yeah. probably when I get pissed I hit the witches anything that makes yes thank you Jose Vegas and that's a and uh that's a good way to do it because what you're doing is you're transmuting your anger and you're turning it into something positive where you're empowering yourself and that's amazing. <laughs> yes, thank you, Carlo Gambino. And uh, I remember I watched, if you got to watch this documentary uh, by Tupac, it's called, uh, it came out in 2003 and it's called Resurrection. And, you know, if, have, if you have you watched Resurrection, it's a documentary about Tupac's life. And uh, what he said in that documentary, which really touched me, you know, I'm basically quoting Tupac when I said that he said that all he cares about is just that through his music uh, and through his art, that if he even just saved one person, that's all that would matter to him. And so I was basically kind of like paraphrasing Tupac. <laughs> Be careful taping at the piano bar. Yeah, like we're kind of like on the let. Now this is a no smoking, uh, well obviously no smoking weed, but it's a no smoking cigarettes bar. But there's a ledge in the back where I'm, where I'm leaning on, where you can smoke your cigarettes. Yes, yeah, Cindy Kirkman, yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, even if, you know, even if you drink just a little less, you know, if you smoke cigarettes, you know, just try to smoke a little less, you know, but, you know, let's all try to have sympathy for each other, you know, instead of judging each other, you know, like life is hard. And it's every year that we're living is a miracle. Every day that we're living is a miracle. <laughs> Yes, we have to save ourselves, it's the hardest. Yes, and that... That's my uh, YouTube channel, that's why you're not mad, are you? No, I'm not mad at all, that is like some serious fault. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's a Samsung, it's a Samsung uh, S22 Ultra. I saw the, the screen of it, it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. What kind of phone do you have? I just have an iPhone uh, 13. Oh, this is a Samsung uh, S22 Ultra. Okay. 5G though, 5G. Do you have 5G? So what are you like narrating? Like, like you telling people? Do you have a blog or something? Yeah, it's called Tessa. Do you have a, a, a can you want to go YouTube on your phone? What's up? Do you want to go to YouTube on your phone? Who wants to be sure it's wifey? for uh, letting me be honest uh, you know I'm you know I'm not looking for uh, you know sympathy I'm not trying to make y'all feel sorry for me I want y'all to be happy for me that you know despite everything that I fought to protect my spirit and I'm here today just happy and and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I, I look at myself as a success story so I'm, I'm really sharing my success story not my sob story Bye.
Oh, you got him, Pete. I'm hanging out with a bunch of married guys. All right. You've been married. No. Are you, how long have you been married? Are you married? What? How long have you been married? How long have I been married?
heart attack when this song came out. Damn. Outside 
inside, he seemed like a really legit operation.
Alright, y'all, I'm back.
they broke up. 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 They broke Mark is from Maine, right? Are you from Maine? And his wife's name is Michelle. And uh, Terry, I mean, uh, Pat's wife's name is Terry. Yes. And they're both uh, in Detroit. Yes. And uh, Pat, well, what do you know, Pat? I miss her terribly. Do you have a dog too? I have a dog. You probably miss your dog too. Oh, this is my dog. <laughs> What's a new, and Matthew, and your wife's name is Julia. You're good. Julia. Where, you, where, are you, where are you from? I'm from Washington, D.C. Matthew. His wife's name is Julia. He they, works for Biden. They've been married for a year, year and a half, right? A year and a half? A year and a half. They've been married for a year and a half. They're still the first trimester. Yeah. <laughs> Commanders. Where are you from, Chris? San Francisco. Chris is from San Francisco, and his wife's name is Michelle. Yes. AKA Ivanka. Uh, AKA Ivanka. You told me it was 18 years. <laughs> Who's Samantha? I don't understand, Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. Things are getting fluid. <laughs>
Well, Janet Mills is the governor of Maine. That's where Mark is from. And uh, they own like grocery stores. Can I get a table? Over time, you can read people. So I want to know how do you how do you see me, Elmer? How do you read me? <laughs> I want to know Elmer Times uh, reading of Tessa O. <laughs> Oh, 